Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right, we're live, end game live here two hours before kickoff on Sunday, week nine, here to help you with some start to sit questions. Give you all the latest injury updates, who's in, who's out, who we have no idea about, because there's a couple of big name players that we are still up in the air with, and that just seems to be 2020, um, and not just because of COVID. Obviously, there's some test results we're waiting to get back, but also um, some really questionable designations for big name running backs. You probably know who I'm talking about. Let's start with the good news. All right, so who is back, officially back, and that would be Christian McCaffrey. That's right, the number one pick in almost every fantasy league. He's finally back, so I don't think there's any doubt that you obviously start him if you have him. Um, the only thing that might be questionable is Mike Davis. Does he get touches? Do you put him in your lineup? To me, the short answer is no. Uh, I don't think that we can even entertain that there's going to be any sort of a, like a timeshare or that Davis is going to you know see more work than expected. It's going to be back to the way it was before. Davis did a great job, but it's Christian McCaffrey. So you definitely plug him in and have him as a top five running back this week. Um, and then also some people spent a first round pick on Michael Thomas and, you know, our long American national nightmares is, is over. Michael Thomas is playing again, uh, after week one, He's playing the same team he played in week one. It's the bucks. And I think we can throw those results out the window. That was just the first week. We'll see if he's truly hundred percent. He should be, he's had plenty of time. Um, but you never know guys coming off now multiple injuries because at first it was like an ankle and then a hamstring and, and then punching people in practice. So uh, hopefully he's over all that, but you have to start him. I don't have him as a top 10 receiver, but obviously you plug him in without hesitation there. And wow. Blast from the past. Here we go. Um, Chris, it is 2020. So we're talking not just Gronk coming back, but now Antonio Brown in Tampa Bay. Um, and who would have thought does Bryant would, come out of the woodwork and he's active and he actually is going to play and see the field. We think uh, today for Baltimore. Um, I think Antonio Brown is, is pretty much a must start. Des Bryant pretty much you shouldn't have him on your roster, but what, what are your thoughts on those two? How much action do you think they'll actually see in week nine? Um, I think Antonio Brown's going to see a decent amount of action. I, I really do. You got Mike Evans is not hundred percent. We don't know if God was hundred percent with that finger. Um, Gronk looks like every time he makes a big play, he's got to get on the, uh, the respirator over there to recover. So I do think we're going to see a decent amount of Antonio Brown. Um, Des Bryant. Yeah. I'm not sure how much we're going to see, but it, it, it is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It feels like what year are we in right now? Right. We got, we got Des Bryant and Antonio Brown coming back. So pre pretty crazy. 2020 just keeps getting crazier. Yeah. And I mean, it, not, not even about Bryant, the player himself. I, I'm sure he's in good shape or they wouldn't have signed him, but that's not a, a high volume passing offense anyways. Even their top receiver is Marquise Brown and he's definitely playable. He's got that speed. Des Bryant never had that kind of speed. He, that's not the kind of offense where he's going to get, you know, volume of targets. He, it's just, it's just not going to happen for him. It'd be great to see him on the field. Good for him personally, but yeah, no interest in fantasy. I've said that before. No interest. Uh, didn't mention him on the waiver wire additions on purpose um, because Des Bryant is not going to help your fantasy team. Antonio Brown will. I honestly, I kind of have him as that wide receiver three kind of value this week. Um, I think you should start him if you have him. All right. Let's say who's in now. Um, again, as always, correct me if I'm wrong. The latest we have Matt Stafford, very questionable heading into this week because of COVID, not him personally, but close contact. He had to quarantine. He had to come out with negative tests. The last I heard is I think he's clear. Is that right? He's going to play for week nine? Yep. Uh, he passed all the necessary COVID tests. They all came back no negative. No vid. They all came back negative. He's in. So good news for, for the offense, for all the pass catchers, because this is a great matchup against the Vikings uh, for the receivers, for TJ Hawkinson. So if you were worried about any of the Lions – uh, wide receivers or Hawkinson. Don't worry about it now. Looks good. And really interesting because Galladay is out, right? We know he's been ruled out for a while. Might miss next week too. Um, but against Minnesota, the second most generous uh, to wide receivers. Well, you got Marvin Jones. Now it looks like, I guess, with Stafford there, that's the question is if Stafford was out, you'd be like, okay, I'm just off, right? Just avoid Detroit. But now Marvin Jones becomes really interesting. And then there's some sleepers. Amendola could be a nice streamer. Um, I personally kind of like Quintus Cephas after what he did in the first couple of weeks, getting targeted a lot. And then some people think, well, look at Marvin Hall, what he did last week. Uh, real quick, any interest in those guys? 
Um, I really do like Amendola this week. Minnesota is one of the worst defenses against slot receivers, so don't be surprised if he has a big game. Now, don't, don't do something crazy and say, oh, Chris said he really liked Amendola, so let me put him in over a better wide receiver. But if you're if you're desperate out there and he's on your waiver wire, I think he'll have a nice game. Uh, Marvin, Hall, Marvin Hall and uh, Quintez Cephas I'm a little more nervous about, obviously. Um but with Stafford back, that does help them, and I think it does make them playable. And, of course, Marvin Jones. I know we've seen Marvin Jones disappoint this year when Galladay is out, but the Vikings don't have a corner. <laughs> like, they don't have a corner, I feel like, that can shut him down. So I, I do feel like this week you can play him with some confidence. I've played him too many times with confidence this year, and he's failed me for me to say you can play him with confidence. You can play him with some confidence. How about that? That's that's reasonable. He doesn't need 100% confidence. He'll be happy with, you know, 70%. Um, no, that's exactly. And he has come on a little bit lately. Give him some credit. But, yeah, like Minnesota already had the worst trio of cornerbacks in the league. And then now, like, two of them are hurt. And so, I, I honestly, I think you got to start. Jones almost got to start. Depends who you got. Amandola is a good start. And, I, you know, I threw Cephas in the tournament, DFS uh, DraftKings tournament. So, why not? Yeah. And then Keenan Allen had a sore throat, not covid it looks like he's clear too. Yeah, it looks like he's good to go. The final test this morning came back negative. He's cleared, and they already announced that he will play. So if you got Keenan Allen, uh, lock him in. Lock him in for sure. Top 10 receivers should be a, a solid game for him. Now, here are the big question marks, and we're going to roll through these guys a little quicker. Guys, by the way, throw your questions out there. If you're on the fence about anybody, right now is the time. Hit us with a start stick question, any lineup advice, because – a lot of these players are going to make or break your decision, you know, make or break your team this week. Um, but also anything you're on the fence about, that's why we're here. All right. So just throw something in the comments or uh, hit us up on Twitter at any game fantasy, but uh, let's get to the big one. It's Zeke Ezekiel Elliott. Um, you and I have been going back and forth about this all morning. Uh, we've heard about 10 re- reports saying that, yeah, he's good to go. He's going to play. And I think 11 and a half reports saying that no, he, he's not going to play. So, What's what's the bottom line here? Because honestly, we've seen conflicting reports both ways. Um, you obviously need to be ready to pivot off of him. Pollard would be the logical, but what, what's the bottom line here as of right now? Yeah, uh, good. That's that's a good question. I wish I could tell you for sure. Um, I'm not Adam Schefter, Ian Rappaport. I don't have my insider info, but yeah, it was like three hours ago. There was a report that the Cowboys had called up or had uh, activated a running back from the practice squad, which is never a good sign, right? Because you don't activate a running back from the practice squad unless you think you're going to need that depth on game day, which put Zeke's status in doubt. And But then a couple hours ago, Rappaport tweeted out that the Cowboys are expecting Zeke to play. So who knows here? Um, just make sure you have a backup plan just in case. Now, the unfortunate thing is they play in the late window of games. So – you may need to pivot sooner depending on what your options are. If you don't have an option, if you don't have another option um, in those afternoon games or the Sunday night or Monday night game, I would probably just avoid Zeke. It's a tough matchup against the Steelers. I know the Ravens put up close to 200 yards last week with Edwards and uh, Dobbins, but still it's a tough matchup. (laughs) We don't, we don't know what this Cowboys offense is going to be this week, right? We know it's not going to be good. I guess we know that we just don't know the severity of the badness of this offense. So if you don't have a better option to pivot from Zeke in those afternoon games or the Sunday night, Monday night games, I would probably just bench him now um, and not run the risk. I agree because again, you talk about Baltimore versus Dallas. It's not apples to apples here. You're talking about Baltimore, one of the best rushing offenses in the entire league. Right. And they have to worry about the third of Lamar Jackson. So um, yeah, it's easier for them to pile up rushing yards that, than you talk about the Cowboys, who have been the worst offense in the league over the last, what, three weeks since Dak Prescott's been out. It's, it's not the same, right? Even though Zeke is one of the best running backs, obviously, when he's healthy, he's not healthy. So even if he plays, you're going against one of the toughest run defenses on a, a gimpy hamstring with very questionable quarterback. So, it, I mean, you might be okay just benching them all together, even if you don't have Pollard and, and just going somewhere else. But it depends on your options. So. Hit us up with a question if you have anything about that. Uh, who's out? Galladay already said he's officially out. Calvin Ridley, I don't know that they've officially said, but it, it, he didn't practice all week looking like uh, there's no chance he suits up. So, I mean, Ridley, you, you got to keep him on your bench too, right? 
Yeah, and, and even if he plays, how good are you going to feel about him? He didn't practice all week, which is never a good sign. Now, thankfully, they do play in the early slate of games, so we'll know um, pretty soon here. I, I would expect them to announce him out anytime now in the next hour or so. So definitely have other options for Ridley. And we saw that one game he played where he wasn't 100% and got zero, zero catches, so you don't want to risk that either. Um in Seattle, very interesting. Chris Carson out, not a huge shock there. Carlos Hyde also out. Um, Alex Collins is active and he is in. So DJ Dallas, you know, is going to be a plug and play here there. Do you think Alex Collins and his return to Seattle actually gets some run? And do you think he's going to all of a sudden become a hot waiver wire pickup? I do think he'll get some run. I don't think he'll be a hot waiver wire pickup, but I also feel like DJ Dallas is going to let a lot of people down. I've seen people say he's like top seven, top five, all this craziness. Look, <clears throat> he wasn't even that good last week. He got two touchdowns. You take away those two touchdowns, he had like 50 yards, <laughs> okay? That's total. That's not rushing. That's total receiving and rushing. He wasn't even that good. Now, I know the matchup is a lot better this week than it was last week, um, but I don't expect him to, to get the bulk of the work. Travis Homer is back, who wasn't – playing last week either so I expect him to get some work as well we could see Alex Collins get some work as well I still do like DJ Dallas as like a top maybe 20 25 running back but don't go crazy and think he's like a top 10 top five like I've seen some people say that's just insane that's not people getting carried away look trust me if anybody knows about DJ Dallas and Travis Homer for that matter uh, being a Hurricanes fan is is obvious uh yeah I've seen DJ Dallas play for the last couple of years um every week in college He's a solid back, but he's kind of one of those Swiss Army knife guys. Like he's really good at, you know, catching the ball out of the backfield. Uh, he used to be a receiver, actually was converted to a running back. Um, he's a nice player. He does not have, you know, game breaking speed. He's not somebody who's going to pile through, you know, defensive line. He, he's just a solid, not spectacular player. Um, Alex Collins has more high end speed. Um, Travis Homer has more speed, but Homer, you know, kind of goes down, you know, when, when the wind blows too hard. So, yeah, I, Dallas is a fine play if nobody else is playing there like Carson, but don't get carried away. Um, and then real quickly, we know Sammy Watkins is still out. Devontae Freeman's still out. Wayne Gallman, I guess, is flexible. Golden Tate did not travel, not injured, not COVID. He's just not quite getting along with the coaching staff. So that's an interesting situation to monitor. Golden Tate not playing. Sterling Shepard obviously gets a bump, as does Evan Ingram. Uh, Kenyon Drake still no go. So it's going to be the Chase Edmonds show. Miles Gaskin on IR. You should know that. Matt Breida also injured. So that means it's Jordan Howard time. Uh, yes, that's right. It is Jordan Howard time. How do you feel about that? Well, I was going to, I was going to throw this one back to you as, as a resident Dolphins expert. What's going to happen here? Uh, what do they got? Jordan Howard, Patrick Laird, who, who, I mean, who are their other running backs? That, that's <laughs> pr pretty much it. I was hoping they would get somebody else. They haven't. Um, yeah. Patrick Laird, um, I don't really think we'll see anybody else. Honestly, it's probably gonna be mostly Jordan Howard. Um, it's not too exciting, but you know, he could get in the end zone at the very least. It's something he does know how to do. If they're in the red zone, they're going to give him the ball. They're not going to force Tua to throw it, you know, too many times in the end zone. I, I, it's a chance he scores a touchdown. Um, but that's pretty much it. I don't, I, you know, I don't hate Jordan Howard as much as most other people do, but, um, I wouldn't start <laughs> in fantasy either. So um all right i think that's it any other breaking news we forgot or are we ready for questions i think we're i think we're ready for questions you ready let's do it okay um so first question comes from ned gabe again apologies if i mispronounce anybody's name i'm doing my best here pick one in ppr Corey davis against the bears jerry judy against the falcons or your boy Devonte parker against the cardinals Ooh, that's an interesting one. <clears throat> I'll go, I'll go off of Corey Davis because we know the bears. Um, it's either they're either first or second. Now I can't remember if they switched as far as limiting fantasy points to wide receivers. Um, that that's a tough matchup. So I would say, no, I think it's going to be more Derrick Henry. I've been back and forth on Devontae Parker because a lot of people saying, well, Patrick Peterson is going to, you know, cover him and he's going to lock him down. You know, obviously he's got a rookie quarterback. But I don't know that Pat Peterson's going to be just – it's not a shadow situation. And you know that with absolutely no other receivers to throw to. Basically, it's Preston Williams who hasn't looked very good and nobody else. I really think Parker's going to get like 10-plus targets. 
So that makes it interesting. But Judy obviously has the best matchup, right? Going against Atlanta. So I, I, I kind of lean Judy, but I wouldn't be surprised, honestly, if Parker put up um, decent numbers. Yeah, I, I lean Judy here too. I really like the Denver passing game this week, obviously against the Falcons. Um, and Judy has been getting more involved. Drew Locke has looked okay. Good enough against the Falcons at least. So I like Judy here. Too. I like you. The question is really how how much faith do you have in Locke versus Tua? Um, Locke has not looked good, but he then all of a sudden looked good in the fourth quarter. So we're going to see more of that. Um, but that was coming from behind mode. I don't know. But then this is the Falcons, so I would tentatively go with Judy, but um, it's that's close for me. Yeah, uh, Gus. Yes, definitely. Let the Edmonds era begin at least for as long. Like he should smash this week, right? So if we're going to talk about like a backup running back like DJ Dallas. I mean, Chase Edmonds is a guy with, is a backup running back with top five upside this week, right? Yeah. Well, and you, you know, talk about backup running back is, is he really the backup anymore? Kenyon Drake, you've been saying this all year. Drake is overrated and hasn't looked good. And now he's hurt. Maybe Edmonds holds on to the main job. They're not tied to Drake, you know, beyond this year. So we might not see much more Drake in Arizona. Um, and so Chase Edmonds could kind of be the guy. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. All right. Ash Pinnock asks, Waller to bounce back after last week's limited game, or should I start Schultz at tight end? No Schultz. No, no Schultz. Schultz. Definitely Waller. <laughs> Waller's pretty much a must-start anyways, right? Yeah, I don't – Waller – Waller. I know, okay, la, you look at that game last week between the, the Browns and the Raiders, and it's easy to look at that and say, like, oh, okay, let me drop Higgins now. Um Waller was terrible, but that the weather in that game was horrendous. It was like blowing sideways. It was awful. Um, so don't read too much into that game. Okay. You kind of like got to ignore that game and move on. I think, yeah, Waller's an every week must start. Definitely do not start Schultz this week. Cause again, no idea what's going to happen with that Cowboys offense. He could be completely phased out. So definitely go Waller there. Let's yeah. see. Do, do, do. Uh, all right. Nate led with pick two in PPR. So this is an interesting one. Antonio Brown, Chark or Crowder. Oh, there's a good one. Is Crowder? Crowder's oh, in, man. Right? in PPR. I haven't heard any of these out. Crowder, the last I saw he is in, but here's the problem. Darnold is out. So we got more Joe Flacco. Um, and Let's see. I'm trying to see where how far down because we got Crowder and going against New England. Now, again, it used to be going against New England. Forget it. But we know, number one, Crowder is going to play the slot. And number two, the Patriots secondary actually hasn't been shutting down teams um, so much as last year. Um, Crowder is interesting because we know he usually has a really high uh, floor based on reception total. But again, it's it's Joe Flacco. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, and then I'd like to say Chark, but who's the quarterback there? Jake Luton. Am I right? Yes. Um, and then the third option was Antonio Brown. Honestly, I, I kind of feel like Antonio Brown's the safest of those plays. If that <laughs> sounds rational. Do you agree with that? Yeah. I, I, I got to go with Antonio Brown and Crowder. Um, first of all, give me, give me the, best receiver out of this bunch i know we haven't seen him in almost two years but he's probably the best receiver in this bunch and he's playing with the best quarterback in this bunch so give me that guy for sure and then i think i gotta go with crowder um i don't think it matters because crowder plays that short role like you're not expecting 150 yards and three touchdowns from crowder you're expecting seven or eight catches for 80 yards right and i think he can give you i think he can give you that whereas chark <laughs> who knows what we're gonna get Jake Luton, who knows who he's going to target, who he's going to favor. Is he going to be accurate? So I think you got to go AB or Chark. And then he had uh, one more question, also PPR, Gallman or Adrian Peterson? Oof, oof, tough time. Tough times in 2020. Tough times. <laughs> uh, tough times when you have to say <laughs> Gallman is the better play. Um, look, the whole Adrian Peterson against the Vikings, like, narrative, I don't think we can call it revenge. Like, no, he already <laughs> played them once before, two, like, it was the last year in Washington. And he did, like, okay, he was, like, 76 yards on 14 carries. So, um, 
No, I'm not starting lines running back if I don't have to. And Gallman, now that Freeman is out, yeah, Gallman's going to be the guy for what that's worth. Yeah, I agree. You got I mean, I'm not like excited about it, but you got to go Gallman. Okay, Ash Pinnock also, also asks, Josh Allen or Tannehill? I don't think I would play Tannehill at Chicago. Um, not that he'll get totally shut down, but it's not a good matchup. And Josh Allen, you know, he always brings that rushing floor. So um, I know he's been down lately, but he's still coming out with decent fantasy points. So I'm going Josh Allen. Well, not only that, he plays Seattle. Like if he can't put yeah. up – okay, <clears throat> I have Josh Allen in one league, and obviously the beginning of the season was incredibly fun. The last three or four weeks have not been so fun. If he can't go out there and put up a monster game against Seattle, then you can start thinking about like, okay, maybe he's not an every week must start quarterback. Because yeah. this is this is as good as it gets basically for a quarterback. So if he doesn't do it this week, um, but you have to have him out there against Seattle. You can't you can't bench him against Seattle. Yeah, no, like I would say, Allah is a great matchup, almost the best possible for a quarterback. But <clears throat> the point is, even even if he is totally off, he's throwing interceptions, he at least can give you something fantasy wise. But like last week, we're going to have 23 yards. OK, but he scored a touchdown on the ground. That kind of saves you there. 61 yards rushing the week before, right? 42 the week before. So at least that props up, you know, yeah. what he might be lacking in the passing game. But John Brown should be healthy in this one. I mean, yeah, you definitely have to start Josh Allen. Yeah. And then um, Heath Johnson. This is this is a good one. Cam Newton or Derek Carr? Uh, ceiling or floor? <laughs> do you want to go for the chance <laughs> of a big week or do you want your safe like 285 yards and two touchdowns? You know, because that's pretty much what Carr does. It's a decent but not great matchup, you know. Um, I have them honestly looking like neck and neck in my rankings. I do have Newton a little bit higher just because it's the Jets, right? He looked okay last week, so I, th- I think I feel okay playing Cam Newton this week. Yeah, this is this is pretty close for me. I do like Derek Carr this week against the Chargers. I think it's going to be a, every Chargers game this year has been like sixty plus points combined. <laughs> like it's just a, a scoring fest, and that's partially because Justin Herbert and that offense has been moving the ball, and the other team has right. to keep up. Um, but I agree with you. Car Car is the safe floor play. Newton gives you that upside because, like Josh Allen, he can rush and he can score a touchdown. And again, like you said, it is the Jets, so that certainly. Um, yeah, that's why I give the nod. Car is a solid quarterback. Honestly, you know, <laughs> never gets quite as much respect as he should. But um, he's not going to win you a championship in fantasy. That's why you know we don't love him. But uh, yeah, I feel like Newton is a stronger play. All right, so here's some questions we got um, in the comments throughout the week that I thought would be interesting to cover that may help people. And I feel like this is, this is, a, this is a good one here because we both had these wide receivers, receivers as must-starts. So who would we pick, Brandon Cooks or Terry McLaurin? Oh, wow. I can't say Terry. I mean, sorry. Brandon Cooks is going to be a nice play this week, but no, you can't start Terry. I got Terry top 10, so – you know, without even thinking now that could Brandon Cooks that score him? Yeah, he absolutely could. Think about 161 yards last time he played Jacksonville. Um, but still, I, I can't bench Terry. Yeah, I agree. I, I like both these guys too. And I think I had Terry as my one of my must starts and you had Cooks as my one of your must starts. But I really, really like them both. But again, I agree. You can't bench Terry McLaurin right now. All right, here's an interesting one. No. DJ Moore or Antonio Brown? Hey, so it has come to this. Um, I'm down on Moore this week. You know, he's been – he's the number two. Huh? Oh, sorry. Go, I was saying DJ Moore is going against KC, which they've been pretty – they've been really good against the, the pass this year, actually. They've been really good against the pass. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a tough matchup. Um, and honestly, you know, he's the number two target there. It's Robbie Anderson's the lead guy. It'll be interesting to see with – this is the first time really, uh, you know, since what we do or whatever, we're going to see Teddy Bridgewater, Robbie Anderson, and Christian McCaffrey, right? That offense all on the field at the same time. Uh, like how much are they going to give the ball to McCaffrey? How much are they going to pass the ball? Um, that's, that, that's the question because, you know, is McCaffrey out of the backfield going to eat up some of those targets? Um, but then the other side, you can say, well, okay, they're going to have to pass the ball to keep up with Kansas city. So maybe more, we'll get a ton of touches, but 
Oh, man. Um, I honestly, I kind of feel like Antonio Brown is going to get a ton of targets this week because you remember what happened the first game with New England or maybe his only game with New England where uh, Tom Brady was forcing the ball his way, right? And he came up with a touchdown and, you know, I kind of feel like we're going to see that. So to me, the, the safer play might be DJ Moore, but I, I kind of feel like Antonio Brown might be due for a bigger game. Yeah, I, I kind of – this is one of those situations where I would probably play DJ Moore because I could not bring myself to start Antonio Brown over DJ Moore in his first game. But then I'd be right. throwing my phone at halftime when Antonio Brown has like, you know, 100 yards and two touchdowns already because Tom Brady has thrown the ball to him 20 times and DJ Moore's over there with a zero <laughs> against the Chiefs, right? But yeah, I, I think you, I think you got to start DJ Moore. But prepare yeah, for some, it, prepare for some frustration. <laughs> exactly, and the only reason I, I, yeah, I would back off a little bit on Browns because Chris Godwin is going to play and Mike Evans is still there, so it's not like you know he's the only receiver, but yeah. And then uh, start two of the three. I'll just assume PPR. They're all wide receivers, so maybe it doesn't matter. Justin Jefferson, Juju, and Michael Thomas. Start two. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, I, I feel like you have to start Michael Thomas. If he's playing, you got to start him. Yes. Um, and then, yeah, this week I would go Justin Jefferson just because I think he has the better matchup. Yeah, I agree. Those are my two choices. Um, you got to start Michael Thomas. You didn't, you know, hold him this long to bench him when he finally comes back. And then I agree. Justin Jefferson just gives you that huge ceiling. Juju, I mean, I know it's Dallas. He has a great matchup, but I mean, he might catch seven or eight passes and only get you 60 yards, right? That's kind of like what he's, that's kind of what his role is in this offense right now, unfortunately. So, and I love Juju coming into the season. So that's tough for me to say. And I just traded you, Juju, so maybe it's a little easier for me to say now. <laughs> yeah, well, now I'm hoping Juju goes off. But, um, no, that, that's the thing. Is he, Juju has a great matchup. But so does Deontay Johnson. So does Chase Claypool. You know, so does Eric Ebron. So does James Conner. So that's the whole problem is Juju. You can't guarantee, you know, where it was like before that he's going to be, you know, the top target there. Yeah, Here, here's a good one because these were each of our – this was my must-start quarterback and your must-start quarterback. So would you play Justin Herbert or Josh Allen this week? Oh, uh, um, yeah, it's Seattle. I'd still have to go with Allen, even though I kind of like Herbert better just overall. Um, yeah, I, against Seattle, you have to go with Allen. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you can't really go wrong here. I like both these guys a lot this week. They're probably both going to have huge games, but I think, again, that matchup for Josh Allen is too good to ignore. All right. And then PPR sounds crazy, but do AJ Brown or Chase Claypool? I thought this would be a really good one for you. I, okay. So I said, and I've been saying that, you know, my gut's telling me Claypool is the receiver who's going to get uh, the most fantasy points in that game, but that's not a guarantee. And then, yes, I've been saying that A.J. Brown has, you know, like with Tennessee, it's a tough matchup. But you can't sit. A.J. Brown's one of those players you can't ever really sit just because it doesn't matter. The matchup, his run after catch ability, he could very easily get shut out. Like what happened well, not that long ago I'll say, uh, well, is being shut that. out to the fourth quarter and then he puts up a touchdown. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Basically. Um, He's a guy and a guy who can catch the ball and take it to the house 80 yards. I mean, he just has that ability that you you can't keep him on your bench regardless of matchup. So, yeah, I, I feel like I can't – I wouldn't feel good putting Claypool or anybody like that over him because Claypool could easily not be the guy this week, you know? Yeah, I agree. I, th I think you got to start A.J. Brown. He's he's one of those guys that you, you start every week. Like you said, he can one pass, break a tackle, 50 yards to the house, and you're feeling good. Um, so, all right, let's see back to the chat. Heath Johnson asks another question from Heath Johnson, which by the way, we appreciate it. So thank you. AJ Brown. Wow. A lot of AJ Brown questions this week. People are really scared of that matchup, huh? Which I understand AJ Brown, CD lamb or Brandon cooks. We def I think we're both out on CD lamb, right? Like we're both like, no, yeah, good. I was going to say not, not lamb. That's the easy definitely, one. Definitely out on lamb. So it's, it's A.J. Brown or Brandon Cooks? 
Uh, I'm looking at like my rankings right now this week. They're neck and neck again. I have AJ Brown a little bit higher though, just because again, the, f- I mean, we got all chaos here. the floor might be higher for Brown. Um, with Cooks, I think that he's definitely, he definitely has a higher, like he could definitely have a bigger game just because it's Jacksonville, right? Um, but it's not guaranteed. So again, I don't know that I could personally put Cooks over Brown. So I'd probably still lean Brown. Yeah, again, this is like that DJ Moore, AJ Brown question, or DJ Moore, uh, Antonio Brown question, where I can't bring myself to put Brandon Cooks in over AJ Brown. But I could certainly see it being the fourth quarter and AJ Brown has like eight or nine points and Brandon Cook has like a 30 point game. And you're, and you're kicking yourself for not doing it. But at the same time, I mean, that's just how it goes. And again, I, I talked about this before. And I'll talk about it again, I'm sure. This is why your leagues need more flex plays. You shouldn't have to make this decision, right? This is not – this is punishing good – this is punishing you for putting together a really good team. You're getting punished because your league doesn't have enough flex spots. Add more flex spots. It makes it more fun. You don't have to make these – crappy decisions and then sit there and watch the guy you left on your bench go off while you lose your fantasy matchup. So move, move to more flex spots. That's my advice. Yeah. Talk to your commissioner and talk to your league and say, Hey guys, let's get, let's definitely, definitely agree with that. All right. Let's do like a Thoughts do the all flex start? league and the problem solved. <laughs> you know, the irony about that is I still have to sit there and make these crappy decisions. It's just, I have to decide between like, you know, Braxton Berrios and what it's like, I have to make these like terrible decisions, but it's like, do I want the guy that is going to give me seven points or the guy that's going to give me six points? <laughs> so it really didn't solve that. But anyways, same, same thing. Yeah. Randall Cobb is like a weekly, hmm, do I start him or not for me? Yeah. Which is but at least I don't have to decide like, anyways. do I start AJ Brown or Brandon Cooks? I can just put both of them in and not worry about it. Right. So that's nice. Right. Right. All right. User, user. Good to have you, man. Cause user, user is probably, by the way, user, user, what is your actual name, dude? Because he's always asking questions. He's always commenting. He's always on here. He supports us so much. Let us know your name so I don't have to keep calling you user, user. But maybe you like that. Maybe, that is, maybe that's your name. I don't know. Maybe you are a user, user. Anyways, <laughs> thoughts on starting Mike Williams over Terry McLaurin today for the touchdown upside in standard scoring. Interesting. Uh. I get that. Yeah. I mean, but still, I mean, Mike Williams has been so inconsistent. I mean, upside, there's a lot of players you could say have upside, but um, no, I, you can't do that because McLaurin, I mean, it's not like he never scores touchdowns, you know, he's not Julio Jones or anything. I'm kidding. No, I used to. Um, yeah, I guess. Huh? <laughs> like, Sorry, go ahead. Like, well, actually they have the same, I guess. Terry has two touchdowns and, and Julio has two touchdowns this year. Um, but no, I, I can't do that. Um, even if it's standard league, you know, I, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, no, you, you've got to start Terry. He has just as good a chance to score a touchdown as Mike Williams does. And he, and he'll probably get you more yards. So definitely got to start Terry McLaurin. Let's see. Okay. So um, Nate led with asks, how is AB living with Brady? Not reality TV yet. That's a good point. That's a good question. How is that not hard knocks? We should do like a mid, they should do a mid season hard knocks and it should just be, follow Brady and AB around. And I really want to see how Giselle deals with Antonio Brown living with them. Like, how does she deal with that? <laughs> well, maybe they are filming it right now and you just don't know it, right? Because they're, they're, they have to edit it and release it. And it's just That's on true. the down low, right? could be. So you don't know. That's true. I mean. What they, is- they should do like that. What is that show? Big Brother or whatever. The one where they all live together just with NFL players. Are they going to call it the Brady Bunch 2? So it'll be like Brady, A.B., Giselle, and their kids. Brady Bunch 2. Like, no. Terrible, terrible joke oh, right there. I like that. I see what you did there. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> now, you know what they should do is during free agency, it should be like The Bachelor, The Bachelorette, you know, where they have like the quarterback or the GM or whoever makes the decisions. And then they have to like eliminate them one by one. Yeah, that would be interesting. Why, why are we not pitching this to like Fox or CBS or something or ESPN? Why are we not pitching this idea? That's true. We should. All right. So Gus gave us a couple updates. Ridley is officially out now. Okay. Thank you, Gus. So yeah, get him out of your lineup. And I don't know if this one really impacts anybody, but T.Y. Hilton is officially out. I don't know if anybody cares. Hopefully He's officially out uh, for of all my teams and all my thoughts <laughs> for the rest of the season. Like and all my lineup. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, Navi Bagri. 
Juju or Justin? We kind of talked about this already, but Juju or Justin Jefferson in half PPR? Uh. I like Jefferson, honestly, even though I know that the matchup is really good, you know, for Juju, it's, it's, it's pretty good for Jefferson. And again, you've seen what he can do. I mean, again, a lot of this is, is kind of, what are you looking for? Are you looking for the potential for a big game or, you know, that, that, that safe floor. I typically um, don't mind chasing the ceiling. You know, I'd, I'd rather have the guy, I, I would kick myself if I had a guy who's who went for 150 yards on my bench. Right. So, yeah. So, I know that the matchup is good. If, if Jefferson flops, you know, cause it's all Dalvin cook. So be it, you know, I, I can live with that. Yeah. I mean, realistically, what's Juju stealing? 70, 80 yards. Well, that's, touchdown. that's the other thing this year. He hasn't had much of a ceiling. So you're not, what are you? Right. Risking? Exactly. Um, give, give me Jefferson for sure. Let's see. Da, da, da. User user says I'm unknown. Just user user works. Okay. I'll just keep calling you user user then. And then uh, Heath Johnson asks, this is a, ooh, this is, a, this is actually, this, first of all, this is right up your alley because it's tight ends. I don't know why I always say tight ends are up your alley like you're the tight end guy. You're actually the kicker guy. You're the kicker and punter guy, actually. But nobody ever asked kicker or punter questions. So. <laughs> I'm all over the kicker. It's because, <laughs> yeah, we should get a kicker question one of these days. Well, maybe because we've scared people away from that because we always say we hate kickers. <laughs> um, it's because you don't like tight ends either. So that way it's like by default it becomes my territory. That's that's what it is. But this is actually this is a really tough question. Hawkinson or Fant this week? Because I really like both these guys this week. Both good. I, I have Fant higher. I'm all over Fant. I mean, Atlanta, you may know, gives up the most fancy points to tight ends. That has been consistent since week one. So you have you want to stream against Atlanta anyways. Fant is basically their top target there. Um, I mean, he really is getting the most targets per game. So we talked about Judy. He's a strong start. Tim Patrick is definitely a guy that you might want to put in your line. I'm all over Fant. I have him actually number four behind Andrews uh, this week. But I have Hawkins for six. But, yeah, I'm definitely Fant. Yeah, I mean, Fant was my must-start tight end, so I got to say Fant. But I do also really like TJ Hawkinson this week um, in this matchup, and especially with Stafford healthy uh let's go to one of, let's go to our, one of our twitter questions this might be the last one unless anybody has more questions guys we'll go to a twitter question uh coach sean lampkin what's sean lampkin coach i'm curious uh so here's two questions a qb1 big ben or matt ryan that's first question big ben or matt ryan uh i think big ben um because i mean this dallas defense is Bleeding points lately. I know they actually have been worse against the run the last couple weeks, but they're going to be bad against everything every week. So I think you're okay starting Big Ben. Um, yeah, I got him higher. Yeah. This is actually really hard for me. Big Ben has been so – he's been very good from a real life as far as a real-life quarterback, but he hasn't been good for fantasy, right? And – I just worry that there's going to be another like 17. And I say this to somebody who has big Ben in our flex league. And every week I'm like, what the heck? And all I got was 15 points from big Ben. And they, you know, they scored 30 points. Um, Matt Ryan, when Julio Jones is in the lineup, just has such a huge, ginormous ceiling and, and Denver's secondary Denver's much better against the run than the pass. I expect this to be, a, a, I expect Atlanta to do a lot of damage against Denver. So this is really close for me. I, I think I have to lean Matt Ryan, but maybe that's because I have big Ben in the super flex league. And every week I look and get disappointed by his 15 feet. He'll throw like two touchdowns, but only throws for like 200 yards. He's, he's not having those huge yardage games. Right. So it's, it's limiting his ceiling. Whereas Matt Ryan, 300 yards and two touchdowns easy most weeks. So I got to go with Matt Ryan, but it's very close. And well, and here's the reason I'm concerned. Well, first of all, I'll look it up. I was actually, just surprised myself. Matt Ryan only has multiple touchdowns, right? More than one touchdown in three games this year. Um, and also the fact that we know Ridley is not playing, that kind of hurts too. So, um, yeah, I don't know that either guy necessarily going to have a huge game, but to me, I just feel like the path of least resistance is, is going to be with uh, Ben against Dallas. So I mean, it is I mean neither is a bad option. Yeah, it is Dallas. It's hard to sit anybody against Dallas. So I totally understand that. 
And then um, pick one wide receiver between Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool, or DJ Chark. I think we're both out on Chark this week, right? With Jake Luton. Yeah. Luton. I mean, it, with with Luton, I mean, look at what he was doing. Even I know he, the thumb injury, whatever, that's why Minshew's out. But he hadn't been connecting anyways with him, you know. So Chark was already kind of fading. And then – I. You know, it could be a toss-up as far as Claypool or Johnson, but to me, uh, you know, maybe a gut call. I'm going with Claypool just because Johnson's more reliant on volume, right, the number of targets he's going to get. Claypool is going to stretch the field more. He has the highest, you know, depth of target among the receivers on that team. He's the guy most likely to get in the end zone, so I would rather go with Claypool. Yeah, it's it's tough. Again, it's the Cowboys. They could both have huge games, right? They could both have big games. Um it could be a James Conner game. It could be a game where James Conner goes for like 150 yards and three touchdowns <laughs> and the receivers right. don't even do much. Um, I, I agree with you that I could totally see Chase Claypool having one or two huge plays in this game and, and outscoring Deontay Johnson. I got to go with Deontay Johnson though. I just think he's going to get more targets and I, maybe I'm more risk averse. <laughs> so I lean that way, but both are great plays this week. Both are great plays. So. Um, all right, we got a couple more questions in the chat. Ali Ellis asks, nice. pick three in PPR. Well, my, okay, Michael Thomas is a must-start, right? Do we both agree on that? Um, I mean, unless, I mean, unless, unless, unless the other two options are receiver, like – Julio Jones. Uh, unless the other two options are like Julio Jones and DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, yeah. So. Yeah, and, and Devontae Adams already played. So, okay, so Michael Thomas is in. So we'll say pick two in PPR between – Godwin, Jefferson, and Claypool. Pick two between those three. That's tough for the whole Godwin thing. I mean, Godwin, you'd think would be a must start, but he hasn't played a couple weeks the finger. Antonio Brown's there. I don't know. Um, to me, though, if Godwin's playing, I'm playing him. I kind of have him right there. I have Justin Jefferson just like one spot ahead of him too, though. Um, so to me, it would be Jefferson, Godwin, Thomas. Yeah, I, I I mean Thomas, we said must start. I really like Jefferson this week. I think you got to put Jefferson in. So for me, it comes down to between Godwin and Claypool. I'm also a little nervous about Godwin. I mean, you got Evans, you got Gronk, you got AB now. I'm definitely nervous about him. But I mean, Claypool, you got Johnson, you got Juju, you got Ebron, you got James Conner. It's not like there's not, you know what I mean? It's not like he's a, a target hog either. So I agree. I think you got to start Godwin. If Godwin plays, you you got to pretty much start him. Um, yeah. But I, I think you're going to be okay. With Thomas and Justin Jefferson, I think you'll be okay. So, Heath Johnson, final question for me. We appreciate the questions, Heath. Uh, Allen Robinson or A.J. Brown? Finally, I'll say not A.J. Brown. Uh, yeah, Allen Robinson, you have to start each week. There's no concerns with him. Tennessee actually is one of the, the worst against the pass. I think they're bottom five you know, giving up fantasy points. So, um, yeah, I mean, you have to start Allen Robinson. Yeah, I agree. Allen Rob this is one, like I, like you said, this is an area where I would bench A.J. Brown. I like Allen Robinson. Nate Ledwith asks, here's an interesting one, how do you see the receivers in Philly shaking out through the rest of the year? Uh, there was a report, by the way, this morning, if you missed it, that the Eagles are expecting to have Alshon Jeffrey back after the bye. Um so how do you how do you see it shaking out the rest of the year now between Fulgham, Jeffrey, Rager? I mean, he included Goddard. I, yeah, well, okay. So the pass catchers, Goddard. Well, what's your take on that rest season? Is Fulgham still going to be an every week must start with Jeffrey out? Because he's, I mean, Fulgham's pretty much an every week must start right now, right? I, yeah, you got to start Fulgham at this point. I don't think I'm worried about Jeffrey cutting into his targets too much because you know that he's. I mean, he hasn't played all year, so how much are they going to really push him? Um, and then they're probably out on him for next year. What would they rather do at this point? I know they want to win. They're technically somehow going to probably win that division, but still, uh, they want to see what Fogum can do. I don't think they're too worried about getting Jeffrey into game shape. He's not going to be their lead guy going forward anyways. Rager's their wide receiver of the future. Fogum is becoming their wide receiver of the president's last future. So I, I still think Fogum leads the team in targets. Um, I still think that Rager is going to be, uh, probably number two. So, you know, as far as fantasy, he's going to be always kind of like a risky flex. And then, yeah, Jeffrey, I, I kind of had high hopes before the season, if, if he could come back and, 
you know, kind of established. But now that they've got other guys established, like Fulgham, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of out on him. You're kind of out on who? On Jeffrey. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought you said you're out on Fulgham. I was really surprised. I was looking at something else. I apologize. Um, yeah, I still like Fulgham every week. I am not. Look, we've done this dance with Alshon Jeffrey before. Until I see Alshon Jeffrey running around healthy, catching passes, playing a full game, I'm out on Jeffrey too. Um, Rager is interesting. We, we saw, like, he, he showed some flashes in his brief playing time. So, definitely, I, I think he's a guy to stash. If he's on your waiver, go stash him. Um, and I like Goddard as every week tight end as, for as long as Ertz is out and maybe even when Ertz comes back. So, I probably just said everything you just said. <laughs> No, I actually didn't mention Goddard. Yeah, I, you know, talked about this a lot this year. Ertz not going to be an Eagle next year, right? He's not. So the fact that he's hurt, Goddard's back. He's pretty much Goddard's their their main tight end, going to be their tight end of the future. Same thing. I kind of feel like it's the same thing. This is going to be a transition uh, year for Philly, right? Even if they somehow make the playoffs, still they're going to establish the younger guys as their new receivers. Jeffrey won't be there. Deshaun Jackson won't be there. Ertz won't be there. Right. So I, I, you got to go with the here now, not who was hot last year or the year before. All right. We just got two questions from Bobby Schmurda. Now, I don't, do you know who Bobby Schmurda is? Uh, I don't think so. Should Bobby Schmurda is one of these. Uh, so if, if you guys don't know, Pierre and I both have a love for 80s and 90s hip hop. Bobby Schmurda is a more recent hip hop artist who released this song that blew up and then he went to jail. And as far as I know, he's still in jail. So if this is, you know, he's he's asking us questions from jail. So that's cool that he's playing fantasy football in jail. I'm just kidding. I know it's not the real Bobby Schmurda. It's not the real. Okay. <laughs> but it would be pretty cool if Bobby Schmurda was playing fantasy football from jail and then asking us YouTube questions. That'd be pretty cool. But anyways, these are actually really good questions. So we should get to them. Um um, I don't know this again, you guys, it really helps us out if you put the scoring format, because that definitely will make a difference, especially when you're asking a wide receiver and a running back question like this. I'm just going to assume PPR because that's the most common. So Amari Cooper or Leonard Fournette. All right. Didn't see that coming. Um, <laughs> hey, Amari I didn't see Bobby Schmurda asking us fantasy football <laughs> questions from jail coming. So it's 2020. It's 2020. You got to be ready for anything. That's true. Uh, look, I'm not out on Cooper, honestly. Um, I, I kind of look, we, we did uh, how many episodes for how many weeks of the AAF? We watched the AAF every week. We did start to sit. Garrett Gilbert was going to be the MVP for the AAF, right? Am I right there? Okay. <laughs> yeah, pro- probably was. Yes, probably was. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that all of a sudden this is going to be like the same as it was with Dak Prescott, but I feel much better about the receivers now that they have a capable passer than Ben DiNucci or Cooper Rush, right? Okay, so I am not out on Cooper or Gallup this week. Um, So I don't mind starting Cooper. Fournette has been getting more involved. uh, So this is true. And the thing is, if it is full PPR, um, that actually doesn't hurt your case with Fournette because he's been getting all the pass catching work instead of Ronald Jones. Um, but the problem is with Fournette, you just you just don't know, right? You don't know what's going to happen. And New Orleans is a tougher run defense. This game might definitely be a shootout. So actually, I would go with Cooper probably. <laughs> Cooper probably. See, I would I would go with Fournette probably. Um, it's close. Cause- yeah, because we have seen Fournette getting more involved. We know the Bucks like Fournette. Okay, Ronald Jones had a three-game stretch there where he went for over 100 yards in every game. And then as soon as Fournette came back, it was like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah, we don't care about you, right? Um, and all it takes is for Ronald Jones to fumble one time or drop a drop an easy pass, and he's on the bench, right? We don't see him again for the rest of the game. So, and like you said, Fournette has been getting involved in the passing game, um, and, and they do need that. So, I like Fournette. I'm really just worried about that Dallas offense today. Um, yeah. It, would- it's a risk. That's for sure. But here's the thing with Fournette. He really, cause he is still kind of that timeshare and this is a tough matchup. The only big game really fantasy, you know, relevant game he's had is that one game in week two where he played Carolina and we know everybody feeds against Carolina. Right. And that was all in garbage time too. That was all in the fourth quarter. Cause he had his big long run. Um, 
So I, I still haven't seen it from Fournette where he's the main guy where he's going to be, you know, putting up numbers. So I just feel like it is very much capped on what he can do next week. You got to love Fournette because guess what? They play Carolina again. Uh, and maybe he's even more established himself as a lead guy. But right now Fournette's just, I just don't know how much he can do for you. Um, so that's, that's the main reason there. And then Pittsburgh, you know, they're going to, focus on shutting down the running game they're a little more vulnerable against the pass so i feel if nothing else if it's going to be a route like we think it is well dallas is going to have to be passing the ball a ton in the second half so yeah it could be one of those games where cooper has like six points going in the fourth quarter and then he ends the day with 20 points and you're like what the heck just happened exactly garbage time baby and then uh bobby schmurter this is a good quarterback question as well herbert or brady Oh, man. Um, you know, I love me some Herbert. I got him top 10 this week. Um, Brady but was, I would have to go Brady. Brady was going to be your must start at quarterback. And then you said Herbert. Well, he you was. Obviously, and, you obviously really like Brady, too. I like it. That's what I was getting at. I like Brady better, though. I, I didn't put Brady in that episode because I thought it was too obvious, too chalky. So, yeah, you got to go Brady. Um, I mean, with Antonio Brown back, everybody's there now. And then New Orleans, you know, um, I, like I said, they're kind of a final defense. So it should be yeah, a lot of points in the passing game. Yeah, you you got to start Brady, in my opinion, as well. All right, famed Tiger. Do I trust Crowder or – okay, here we go. Do Crowder or Fournette in his flex? And, again, I'm going to assume PPR because that's really the only way you're playing Jameson Crowder is if it's PPR, right? <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll – just kind of say the same thing. I go with Crowder, even though it doesn't look like a great matchup, he's going to get a ton of targets. And then, yeah, I'm just, I'm a little wary about starting Fournette yet this week. Yeah. This is, this is one of those. I like Crowder uh, over Fournette there. And then yes, fame tiger. Michael Thomas is actually going to play, get him in your lineup. All right. So it looks like that's it from the chat, but I, but I have a question from you for you from, uh, my friend Jimmy, who I kind of help with his fantasy team. So I, I had him pick up Darnell Mooney off waivers this week. So now he's like, he just asked me, should he start Mooney or Evans in half PPR? Mike Evans? Uh, you, yeah. Well, you know what? Okay, so I like Mooney this week. It, I talked about this already with Allen Robinson. Tennessee, not you know very tough to put up passing points against. They did just add Desmond King, which helps. But again, that's... That's not going to help them necessarily just this week. Um, but, yeah, I'm a little down on Evans more than usual, but not lower than Mooney. I mean, I, yeah, I wouldn't bench Evans for Mooney, in other words. Oh, I was going to tell him to bench Evans for Mooney. <laughs> well, just... the, the thing is, who's it's half PPR. I mean, who's got the, the touchdown upside? It's definitely Evans, right? Even if Evans doesn't put up a big game, he's got a lot more chance to get a touchdown. I know, but um, we've seen in game we've seen in games with Godwin healthy. He only gets like one or two targets. Now he's got Godwin and A B. So right. I mean, what, what is he gonna get? One catch for 10 yards and it's gonna be a touchdown. I'd I'd still rather get four or five catches from from Mooney and half PPR. Um I, I don't know. I, I, I'm just so worried that Evans is gonna have one of those one catch for 10 yard games. He could. I mean, I'm not going to lie. He definitely could. Um, but the thing is, yeah, Mooney, I just don't know how high his ceiling is just yet, just because, again, he's working behind Allen Robinson. You know, it's not not the best pass offense there. So I like Mooney as a player, and I, I don't mind his matchup this week. Um, yeah, I guess maybe I'm just not as down on Evans um, yet as I should be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll see. And then help my wife out here. So my wife is down – Chris Carson mixing on a bye this week. Calvin Ridley out. So she has, she needs one running back and one flex. This is full PPR. Between DJ Dallas, Leonard Fournette, Damian Harris, and J.K. Dobbins. So one running back and one flex. Full PPR. I'm, yeah, yeah, you got to start Harris going against the Jets. I mean, you've seen what he's doing. He's the, the lead back. Again, Fournette splitting time. You know, D Dallas is not great. He's good, but not great, you know. But, yeah, definitely Harris. Oh, man, Dobbins, I mean, if it was any other matchup, it's just a really tough matchup with Indy. But um, I would say between Dobbins and Dallas, I would probably go with – I'd probably go with Dobbins still. What about Fournette? No interest out of those four? 
He's, nah, not over those guys. So you so you would go with Dobbins and Harris. Yeah, definitely Harris, and then it's close between Dobbins and Dallas. Dallas probably um, no, actually not even. Yeah, I definitely go with Dobbins. See, my my fear with Harris is he doesn't catch any passes, and I know it's the Jets. I know he's probably going to get fifteen plus carries, but what, what if Cam vultures all the all the touchdowns and he just gets yards? Mm. <laughs> It's possible. Here's the thing, too. And then, you know, talk about how Dallas, uh, DJ Dallas, scored those two touchdowns last week. Seattle has been passing the ball in the red zone a lot. All right. So with Carson out there, I don't think you count on the touchdowns necessarily. Um, and this is a game going back and forth, uh, you know, with Buffalo. I think we're going to see a lot of passing. So I don't, I don't feel like we're going to see a big game from Dallas. You know, Dobbins obviously has a really tough matchup, um, but he's going to get – the pass catching, like you said, um, I think he's just as good a chance to score a touchdown. So, um, and looking here, it kind of verifies. I got Harris at the RB 11 this week. Maybe I'm a little too high on him, but against the Jets, he's averaging almost six yards a carry, right? So I, I like Harris against the Jets. And then I got Dobbins at 15. I got uh, Dallas down there, like 18. Okay. All right. And then we actually got one more question, but it's, it's more of a personal question from Nate Ledwith. Do you two play in the same league? Uh, yes, we do, and we have before. Have you played each other yet this season? We actually played this week, and who won? We well, played this week, and we made a trade before this week, <laughs> which is a really unusual, I think, right? Yes. So we play in so we play in this league that's kind of been a brainchild of, of mine and is for a while now, where you you only start you start one QB, one running back, one wide receiver, and then you have seven flex positions, of which one is a super flex. And then it's also tight end premium. So tight ends aren't just a complete waste. Um, we're both doing very poorly in that league. I'm three and five, and I think you're two and six. I am. Yes. My, Let me. I mean, I, I started my, my first five picks were Christian McCaffrey, Deshaun Watson, Julio Jones, Juju, and I think David Johnson. So that pretty much explains why I am three and five. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey going to kill it. And I, I'm looking Christian too, McCaffrey it's back. crazy. Christian McCaffrey back this week, so I'm excited. Yeah, it, well, we should clarify a couple of things too. First of all, this is not just like a regular league where we happen to be in it. This is an, an expert league. Yes. Because, uh, you know, I I work with Rotoballer, you know, and Chris, formerly of Rotoballer. And we have a bunch of Rotoballer writers in there. These are guys who write articles every single week about fantasy football. Uh, so a lot of smart guys in there. So I don't feel bad saying that we – you know, aren't dominating this league. Um, but it's a really interesting format because everybody's a flex pretty much. You have to start one quarterback, one running back, one wide receiver. Uh, and then that's it. The rest is flex. And there's one super flex. And I'm looking at my team. And like, I don't have bad players. Like, I don't know. I didn't have actually too many devastating injuries. So I'm trying to figure out why um, my record is so bad. Maybe just because some of the players I drafted haven't quite lived up to expectations. Like I got Josh Jacobs who's been fine, but he wasn't worth the first round pick, right? Or a second round pick, whatever I got him for. I got Juju, who hasn't quite been what we expected. Well, you only got Juju this week. I I was the one that roll out sucky Juju every week. (laughs) Yeah, but I would have traded him for Amari Cooper. Now you got to deal with Amari Cooper, so. (laughs) True. Um, Mike Evans. We just talked about Mike Evans. Yeah, he's my other top receiver so it's like not terrible players and not devastating injuries i can't blame injuries so you know i can't use that excuse you can at least say that for mccaffrey you know you were without your top pick for most of the season so yeah just that, that's the thing in, in this format there's <laughs> the, you're picking up guys on the waiver wire that a lot of times aren't even rostered in 12 team leagues um right because we're not even close i'm i'm starting tim patrick this week i'm starting John Brown. I, like Tim, I like Tim Patrick. It's but I'm, my point is when you lose a guy, it's very hard to replace him, right? There's not a lot on the waiver wires. There's not a lot to go out there and get. So when you have injuries or, or you have COVID things, it's it makes it very very challenging. But yeah, I've been just for reference, I've been stashing Josh Gordon all year, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> I've been. I mean, I've been. Two and five before, and I still made it to the championship. So I don't. I feel like I'm not out of this thing yet, especially with McCaffrey coming back um, and a healthy, oh, yeah. Julio, a healthy Julio Jones now. 
Deshaun Watson, that offense looking better. I just need Big Ben. That's the thing. Big Ben's been my other quarterback. And like I said, it gives me like 13, 14, 15 points, but he's not having those huge Big Ben games. That's been hurting me too. But we'll let you know who wins uh, for sure. Remind us next week if we forget. All right, well, and we got some more questions. So should we just get – should we roll them? Or are we over time here or what? Should we, should we answer some more or should we – uh, well, we're good. People are asking. Let's answer. That's what we're here for. All right. Justin Credible, who also, by the way, Justin, thank you. You're, you've been a big supporter to the channel. Really appreciate it. Um, Johnny Smith or Hayden Hurst since Ridley is out? Uh, that's interesting. I actually was just writing about Johnny Smith for a, a Dynasty article, kind of unrelated. Um, he was on fire the first four games, and then he's totally cooled off, you know, with, with Davis and Brown both playing he does just doesn't get the target share um so it's hard to really be on him but that said i like him better than hurst this week based on the matchup um because not that chicago is an easier defense but because they shut down wide receivers which means that could leave you know the tight end more open so i i have smith higher not because it's a great spot for him personally um yeah, so I, I do, yeah, and see, look at this, verifying Chicago is actually bottom 10 in terms of fantasy points allowed to tight ends. So it's really not a bad matchup for him. So I do have Smith higher. Now, the only thing is you say, well, Hayden Hurst, because Calvin Ridley's out, maybe Hurst gets more touches. That hasn't necessarily been the case. I think he's been more dependent on Julio being out. Yeah, I like Johnny Smith. Um, we talked about it. I, I thought he was your must-start tight end. No? But anyways, maybe not. Um but with, with the Bears probably doing a good job against the receivers, I think Smith is going to get more of the looks. And then he also asks, Sterling Shepard, Russell Gage, or Chenault have PPR? I'm assuming we pick one of those. Mm, that's closer. I've been big on Chenault all year, but now with Luton at quarterback, no, you can't. Uh, Gage is interesting just because Ridley's out, but I still – have some reservations about him. Um, so yeah, I would still in the first one, the first Shepherd. player was who? Sterling Shepard. Shepherd. Yeah. Golden Tate's not playing. So yeah. yeah. Shepard. Yeah, I agree. I think you got to roll Sterling Shepard. He looked pretty good last week and now without Golden Tate, you should see even more work. And then Edwin Norgase, again, apologies if I didn't pronounce that right. Josh Jacobs, Justin Jefferson, or Robbie, I assume he means Robbie Anderson, in the flex spot for half point PPR. Wow, who are your running who are your running backs that you can flex Josh Jacobs? Nice job. No kidding. <laughs> um, okay, I would say not out of those three, not Robbie Anderson. No. Um, so it's Justin Josh Jacobs Jefferson or Josh Jacobs in half PPR. Oh man. Um I know Jacobs has been kind of questionable this week. So, I mean, if he plays, usually that he's automatic start. Um, he could be kind of a disappointment this week, though, because like I say, he's not 100%. Uh, and the Chargers run defense has been okay. Um, Jefferson, what we already said, you know, could be a smash spot for him. So, I, I think to me, his question is do you need a safer play? In that case, you just stick with Jacobs and what he's going to bring. Um, but are you looking for upside, which it sounds like on your roster, you can take that chance. If your other players are the better than all them, then I would go Jefferson. Yeah. Usually in half PPR, I almost always lean the running back, but this might be a case right. where I do lean Jefferson because he can get you a hundred yards and a touchdown. Right. Um, and Jacobs has, he's, he's getting the volume, but he's been disappointed and, and not having Trent Brown has been a big blow to that offensive line. Um, and he's going to be out again this week. So I think I'm with you. I think I start Justin Jefferson. I, I really want to know who your other, dang, who your other running backs are that you uh, <laughs> flex. Um, can flex Jefferson. All right. And then they level, yes, Tim Patrick is a good start this week. I really like the Denver. I like Patrick and Jerry Judy this week. So, all right. I think we got to everything. Did we get to everything? We cover, I think we covered everything. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Hopefully everybody yeah, wins I, this week. That's always the goal. Except that's, you. That's the goal. Except you. I don't want you to win. <laughs> <laughs> for just for this one week only, and let's put each other again. Yeah, that's true. Look, if I if I don't win, and this is the sad thing, it's not a dynasty league. So if I don't win this week, then it's like I'm pretty much toast and I can't do anything about it. So I'm just gonna start shaking things up even more. So well, I look um, at like I, I feel like we're both like I look at my team, 
I think my team can compete, right, with McCaffrey and Julio and Deshaun Watson. Um, it's not yeah. the it's not the best team in the league. I know that. I'm not delusional. But I gotta win this week. Four and five, you're still in it. Three and six, oof. Yeah, you gotta get really lucky. Yeah, exactly. You're you're still in in decent shape. Like I said, you're getting your best player back. So um, I'm trying to look real quickly for last second updates, and you guys can probably do this also. But see about Zeke Elliott because he's the one player that we still really don't know about. Um, it says that he has a good chance to play. That's your latest update. So again, though, that... it's the afternoon game, or it's the the second yeah. slate of games. I say afternoon because I'm on the West Coast. Uh, but it's the second slate of games against a really good run defense in a potentially really bad offense. If you have a decent option in the first wave of games, I would just play that guy. I wouldn't chance it um, unless you have, a, like I said, unless you have that backup either in those second wave of games or in Sunday night or Monday night, then you can wait. Um, and yeah. by the way, Edwin's other running backs are Chase Edmonds and James Robinson. So I can, yes, those guys to me are must starts this week. Absolute must starts both in great yeah. spot. And then oh, uh, there you go. just incredible. Yes. We've talked about Josh Allen a few times. We both think he has a great game this week against Seattle. It's got to get it done against Seattle this week. So yes. Yeah. We you got to start. Here. All right. I think we got it. All right. Well, thanks to everybody who left a comment uh, who watched. Again, if you have any last second uh, questions, you know, you follow us on Twitter at any game fantasy, hit us up or, on our individual Twitters, I'm at Roto underscore Chef. He's at Chris Mangano. Uh, leave some comments here. Of course, if you guys haven't subscribed already, please hit that button. Uh, we got coming out tomorrow, waiver wire um, videos. Talk about your top pickups after what happens today. And then instant reaction. Everyone's favorite, Chris, you do the, uh, the panic time, right? Who should you panic about? Everybody loves to panic. <laughs> Yeah, I did. I did some buy lows last week. I don't know. We'll see what I, what I do. I think I might do a trending one tomorrow. We're still kind of outside of the waiver and the start sit. We're still kind of actually, you guys. You know what? What do you guys want to see? Let us know. Leave, either yeah. message us on Twitter or leave us a comment on a video or something, and tell us what you'd like to see. I mean, obviously, we got the waiver wire, we got the start sit, but outside of that, we're pretty open. Uh, we want to give you guys content that helps you out. So let us know. What do you got? What kind of videos do you guys want to see? What what? What do you find helpful? Buy low, panic, trending players, risers. I don't know what any of the injuries, whatever else. I don't know, let us know. There you go. I mean, that's, we're here to help. So wherever you guys want to see, we're open, but we got waivers every week, start sit every week. And of course, in game live every week. So yeah, do us favors, let us know and uh, hit that button that says subscribe and give us a thumbs up and spread the word. All right. Let everybody know. Cause we're here to help. All right, guys. Good luck in week nine.